Hello everyone, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. This week we are going to be taking a look at some watercolors by the brand Mia, which is a name that you may recognize if you have seen any jelly gouache anywhere on the internet. It's been pretty popular the past few years and as someone who really enjoys the Himi jelly gouache by Mia, I was really excited to have the opportunity to try out these watercolors. The design is something very different from anything I've really seen in a watercolor palette. All of the waters come out in this little plastic insert. I suppose that you could move that over if you wanted to have like an opaque white painting service for mixing your colors on, but we'll talk more about the design of the palette as a whole in a moment. First, let's start just by talking about the paints themselves while I swatch them. So I'm sure you noticed right away that the shapes of these paints, pans, I guess they're not necessarily exactly like pans, but the shape of the paints themselves, the extruded paints, is more of like a diamond or a rhombus than like a standard rectangle. So it was um, very different and then the layout is affected by the shape as well. So I wasn't really sure what to think about these at first and I hope that you don't mind that these swatches are not perfect. That's something that's really how it's always been. My swatches are never perfectly straight or anything, but with these it's just like amplified, you know, because the shapes are a little different. So um, I found that to be a little strange at first. So in the beginning I was like, no, I just want you know, long strips of swatches or just rectangles or something. And I was originally thinking that I might just make my own swatch card to keep in the palette. But because of the way these colors are organized, it almost would have been more of a hassle to try to make my own swatch card instead of just using the one that comes with the kit. So we get wonky swatches with my brushes. I hope you don't mind. I definitely don't. While I was swatching these watercolors, I was actually really excited about the range of colors. This is a very compact palette for something that houses 36 colors, which is kind of a lot. And I found them all to be vibrant and beautiful and saturated. The little pans reactivated really nicely and I like the range that we have here. I didn't notice that any of my swatches here dried like very chalky or dulled down too much when the paints were dry. Everything looked really nice and I'd say that it reminds me a lot of the jelly gouache in that the quality will not get in your way of these paints and it can still be a lot of fun and really inspire you to try out a medium or to have fun. I think that's one of my favorite things about the Himi jelly gouache is that no, there's no pigment information and it can get really messy. So like it's not the super highest quality paint that you can find, but it's so much fun. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, I found the exact same to be true of these watercolors. There's no pigment information and even the packaging that I got is not in English and so I did use Google Translate so you can see, you know, the colors have names like um, bright red and ocean blue and, and lemon yellow, things like that. So you can see the color names on the packaging, but you're not going to get any sort of pigment information. But that doesn't mean that the paints aren't usable or that they can't be a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed working with these. I was able to layer my watercolors without the layers underneath just lifting. The colors stayed where I wanted them to and they also spread just how I wanted them to on wet paper so they weren't like jumping all the way across the page if I dropped the paint into like a wet onto wet paper and at the same time there was really nice 
gentle blooming, which is pretty perfect for me and how I like to paint. Now that we've talked a little bit about the paints, let's discuss this palette. The design and layout of the colors I didn't like at first, but as I was working, it was kind of nice to have like little groupings of colors, like having the yellows all together kind of in a cluster and then having reds and browns and blues in little clusters, little groups like that. I actually kind of liked, it was nice instead of having straight rows, you know? And so that was fun, that didn't bother me. The swatch card, once it was done, you know, when it's done, you can keep it with the palette. I actually really like that it comes with a swatch card because it makes it so much easier to see which colors are which without trying to put together this different format, you know, this different layout on your own. So I'm glad that it comes with, you know, a card for swatching your colors. You'll notice that I am mixing my paints on the clear lid of the palette. This, I'm going to go ahead and say that this palette doesn't really come with a mixing tray as clear plastic like this just doesn't work very well for mixing watercolors, you know. I have a dark brown table, which means that when I'm working with transparent watercolors like these, it's going to be really difficult to see the colors that I'm painting with. You'll see it towards the end of this video, but what I ended up doing was keeping a piece of watercolor paper off to the side while I was working so that I could test the colors I wanted to use by swatching them before placing them on my paper. And that may seem like a lot of extra work, but it was something that I just kind of got into the groove of and wasn't thinking about it too much as I went along. I do wish that either the lid was opaque or that it had some other sort of mixing area. And because the paints themselves are in a, like a plastic tray, it's not a super sturdy plastic tray. So I don't really want to just take the plastic tray out, set it on the side and use the bottom of the palette container as a mixing area, like I showed you in the beginning of this video, because the plastic that holds the paints, I feel like it would kind of get crinkly and wrinkled while I was like pressing on it to get the paints, you know what I mean, if that makes sense. And I, I just didn't feel like a super intuitive way to work. And I like that with the paints being inside of the palette, inside of that white tray space, they weren't going to move around or be shifting, which I think would have bothered me if I had tried to take them out so I could use the white surface as a mixing surface. So I would say I'm not very thrilled with the design of the palette itself as far as just it's kind of weird trying to have a mixing space and I guess you could have a separate you know tray or separate palette off to the side for mixing your colors if that's something you want to do and I, I don't think that would be too much of a hassle. I guess you could also like have the lid propped up against like a water container and then you could put your swatch card in the lid and then have a separate tray and that probably wouldn't take up too much extra space. When I was looking up this product on Amazon, I always kind of creep a little bit in the reviews on Amazon just to see what people are using paints for. And with paints like these, because the set has a lot of colors and is very affordable, I saw a lot of people who were painting directly from the wells right onto their watercolor paper. So there were a lot of people who actually weren't mixing any colors at all, which works really nicely when you have a set like this that has a lot of colors in it and you're going, I just, I want this shade of blue and you can put it right on. And if your paper's wet, you can blend on the paper. So I guess it works for that style of painting, if that's something that you like to do or even want to try. It works really well for just taking the paints right as they are without any mixing. But I really like to add a lot of subtlety to my colors and get specific mixes. There are some times where I just want a specific color straight out of the well or the pan, like just the way it is. But most of the time I want to mix my colors, so I do need, you know, a space to do that in. I want to add at this point that this piece will be available for sale on my shop. You can find prints as well. I'm gonna have to think of a name for it. Hmm. If you're interested in a digital download of this piece, it's actually the digital download for the month of June for my patrons and that is up for patrons now. You can find that over on the Patreon. <laughs> Thank you.
So at 20 US dollars for 36 colors, I think these paints are definitely worth what you pay for them. They're not going to be, you know, super fancy um, archival quality artist grade paints. We don't know what pigments are used in them. We don't know how light fast those pigments are. But if you're looking for paints to learn with or just to have fun with, to play with a large variety of colors for not a lot of money, I think these are worth it. They're a lot of fun. And when I'm looking to just chill with low stress painting time, maybe sitting around with my kids and we're all painting together and we're all using our own paints, I'm absolutely going to grab these and I had a lot of fun with them. If you have any other questions about these watercolors, anything I didn't address or just anything you're curious about, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Let me know what you think or if you've tried these watercolors yourself, I'd love to hear from you. As always, a huge thank you to my members on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. It is so fun for me every week, basically, to get to make exclusive content for you guys. You've all been so patient, as I haven't been in the studio nearly as much lately because my husband is recovering from surgery. In that vein, a thank you to all of you just for being here and for supporting me. I'm so grateful that I get to take the time to take care of my family and enjoy the summer with them. Thank you all so much for checking out this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.